Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. A reading of the Gospel of St. Matthew. May his blessings be with us all. Amen. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Now when he rose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the law through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry and sent forth to put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and all its districts, from two years old and under, according to the time that had been determined by the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted, for they are no more. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he rose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. But being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee, and came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled what was spoken in the prophet, he shall be called a Nazarene. We're going to stay with the Coptic Orthodox Christians now as we visit Hertfordshire. There are around 20,000 Coptic Orthodox Christians in the UK with their roots coming from Egypt. This is the Coptic Orthodox Church of St George in Stevenage in Hertfordshire. It's the first Coptic Orthodox Cathedral in England. The Sunday service is packed with Coptic Orthodox Christians and their families. Coptic Christians are very proud of their connection with the Christmas nativity story, with Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus escaping from King Herod and fleeing Bethlehem for safety in Egypt. Fadi Mikel tells us how the story is told in the church's many icons. This is um, the story of the Holy Family's flight to Egypt. Um, you can see they're, they're crossing from uh, Israel actually to, to Egypt, denoted here by the pyramids. Uh, I suppose in, in an icon like this and every other icon, you always see a lot of gold leaf. Gold leaf actually is a symbol in iconography for the glory of God. So I always find it very comforting in icons to see a lot of gold because you're always then comforted knowing that God is always around you, God is always comforting you wherever you are. And especially in cases of suffering like this where they're, you know, they're suffering doing a, a long journey to where they need to get to. The Virgin Mary here, she's, she's cradling Christ um, as a very nurturing mother and she's often dressed in blue in this icon with stars all around her because there's a, a verse we refer to in Malachi where she, we talk about her as, as almost the sky or the heavens who gave birth to the Son of Righteousness. So that's why you have all this, this blue denoting the, the sky or the heavens and stars flicking all around her. Joseph is, is either in the, in the back or in the front in, in various versions of this icon, in the back almost like looking in, in wonder and awe at this thing he's, he's caring for, he's been put in charge of caring for. Even the donkey is, is facing us because in iconography we always have those who we're venerating or considering in the icon as, as someone really worthy of consideration facing us and those who are facing away from us are like those who have almost turned away from, from the belief of, 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 God, of Christ. Manal Tadras is a consultant psychiatrist who moved to the UK from Cairo 20 years ago. She tells us about the importance of her traditions and why Coptic Orthodox Christians like her fast for 43 days before celebrating Christmas Day on the 7th of January. During this fast, we avoid all animal products or dairy products. So it's um, vegetarian without eggs or milk 
uh, probably more vegan. Not very easy, but it is a, it's not only about stopping the food. We constantly remind ourselves that we have some control um, to think further, to have some kind of sublimation, if you like, uh, to get in touch more in deep with our faith. So on the six um, late evening, we come to church, we have the Christmas Mass, and then after the Mass and the Holy Communion, we break the fast together as congregation, the church again, each of us will bring something to share. Um, and it's, it's about the joy, I guess, rather than just the food. Bishop Angelus is the leader of the Coptic Orthodox Church here in the UK. He too is proud of his church's connection with the nativity story. And that Christmas story, he says, is just as important to us today. Egypt is always seen as, as the place that adopted the Lord and the Holy Family as refugees when they fled and he was still an infant. So it all seems to come together and until now we have sites in Egypt that were visited by the Holy Family where they rested, where they stayed, um, where they prayed, where they lived a very normal life as a family that was fleeing persecution and had found rest, but was still a guest waiting to go back to where it belonged. Every time we come to celebrate the Nativity Feast, we remember our brothers and sisters in the Middle East. In Egypt, we're actually more fortunate than many because it is the largest Christian presence in the Middle East. We're speaking 13 million. But there are other places in the Middle East, the birthplace of Christianity, where those families are actually living that story of flight. So, of course, we feel for our brothers and sisters in the Middle East, because at a time when we're celebrating, they're actually remembering what they've left behind. Some of them have even left family behind, and that becomes, I think, a particularly painful time for them.